Hello everyone, in this video we're going to look at how to draw addition polymers. The purpose of this video is to help you to be able to draw the structural formula or a number of repeating units of a polymer from a given monomer. In many cases, you will also be required to draw the structure of a monomer from a given polymer. Before we begin, you may want to download the handout accompanying this video by following the link in the description box below. So let's begin. An example of a molecule that undergoes addition polymerization is ethene. And in fact, all your alkenes can undergo addition polymerization because they are unsaturated. Basically, what happens during addition polymerization is when your monomer units join together, the carbon-carbon double bond breaks, no atoms are lost, in the process. A monomer is basically a small molecule that joins together to give your polymer which is made up of the joining of many monomers. Look at the structure of ethene below. You may want to pause the video and think about what the structure of polyethene would look like if many of these monomer units join together. Look at the structure below. Do you think it's possible that ethene monomers join together to give a polymer that looks like that with this structure? Well, if you look at every carbon, every carbon now has five bonds, and this structure is actually not possible because it violates the octet rule. So how then would these monomers actually join together? Firstly, the carbon-carbon double bond needs to break to free up electrons for sharing with the neighboring carbon atoms. So instead of what we have over here, we would expect the structure to look something like this. So polyethene is actually a saturated molecule because there is no presence of any carbon-carbon double bonds. So all these ethene molecules join together, each of them we call them the monomer. And the resulting structure that is formed when all these monomers join together is called the polymer. It may seem very simple to just get the structure of the polymer from the monomer, but things may get complicated with other molecules. Let's now go to the handout to see some simple steps that can help us draw addition polymers. Firstly, we need to understand the different terms. So the molecule that joins together is called the monomer, and we may be asked to draw one of two things. We can either be asked to draw the number of repeating units in the polymer or the structural formula of the polymer. Notice how they are different. To start from a monomer, here are six steps that we need to follow. Step 1, we first draw the structure of the monomer if it is not given in the question. Once we are done, we look out for where the CC double bond is. We draw that out and we add vertical lines on the top and bottom. We then fill in the atoms or groups that are bonded to the carbons in each molecule. So how do we do that? Let's zoom in. This is my carbon-carbon double bond. There are two carbons on it. The one on the left is connected to two hydrogens and the one on the right is connected to also two hydrogens. So when I draw it out in this other format, I will make sure that the one on the left has two hydrogens and the one on the right also has that two hydrogens. So basically what I'm doing is to shift the hydrogens around. Okay, once done, we add horizontal lines on the left and right of each carbon and what you have here is one repeating unit. Basically what it means is that this part of the molecule repeats many many times in the polymer. So this is just like a part of it. If the question asks you for the structural formula of the polymer, we basically just add in the brackets with an N. And what that means is that this part of the molecule repeats 
n times, and n is a very large number. So that's it. It's time to move on to practice some examples to help us master this skill. Let me walk you through the first exercise. Remember the six-step approach we talked about earlier? Right, the structure of the monomer is already given, so we look for the CC double bond. That is the first thing we do. So here, I'm going to find the CC double bond, and then add vertical lines on the top and bottom of it. Let's look at carbon on the left. This is my CC double bond. Carbon on the left, which is this guy, is connected to one hydrogen and another hydrogen. So I'll put it in like that. Carbon on the right, over here, is connected to one hydrogen and another group of things over here. So following that, one H over here, and a CH3 group of atoms like that. We then erase one bond and draw lines from the left and right. This is known as one repeating unit. For the structural formula, we simply add brackets and a subscript n. So for two repeating units, it's basically two of this without the brackets. So it looks something like that. Okay, so there you have it, the two different structures that you need to be able to draw. So you may want to pause the video now, try the following examples before we go through the answers. Let's go through question two. First step, look for the CC double bond. Carbon on the left, there is one hydrogen, one chlorine. Carbon on the right, one hydrogen, one chlorine. So basically we highlight this. Next step, remove double bond. Draw the lines across, put in the brackets. And for two repeating units, just draw the structure twice. Question three, again, this is my CC double bond. Draw that in first. On the left, this carbon is joined to this and that. Put that in. On the right, this carbon is joined to this group and this group. Okay, remove one bond, join to the left and right. Always check your answer that each carbon has four bonds. Two repeating units, you just have to draw it twice. In question 4, the carbon-carbon double bond is not in the usual orientation, but we still do the same thing. Look for it here. Okay, so the carbon on the top is connected to this. Carbon on the bottom is connected to this. Alright, so draw this carbon-carbon double bond. First carbon connected to two hydrogens and the carbon below which is here on the right connected to this. Erase, add lines, put in brackets and Okay, question 5 is a little bit different. We are doing the reverse now. Given the structural formula of the polymer, how do we draw the structure of the monomer? 
All right, we just have to work backwards. Remove the end, remove the brackets, put back the double bond. Okay, and we have the structure of the monomer. So we copy that on the left. So basically that's it. And if you are looking out for two repeating units, we just have to draw it twice. That's two repeating units. Same goes for question six. You notice that this repeats twice, so there are two repeating units here. So what we need to do is we have to take this part, add in the double bond, and that will give us the structure of the monomer. Then for the polymer, same rule applies. Okay, basically remove double bond, add the lines, and end. Right, there are two more things I want to go through with you. The first is with regards to the naming of polymers. So for question one, the monomer is propene. So the name of the polymer, we call it polypropene. Basically, we just put the word poly in front of the name of the monomer. So you would already guess that the name of the polymer for number 2 is poly-1,2-dichloroethene. Do you recognize the polymer for question number 5? The monomer is actually styrene. And therefore, the name of the polymer is polystyrene. This is the material that is found in many of the food packaging. Another thing you notice is that why is it for some questions I draw all the bonds whereas for some I have like condensed it to just show it as a chunk of alphabets like that. Depending on the question you may be asked to draw the full structural formula or the displayed formula in which every single bond is being shown. Otherwise if they are just asking for the structural formula you may write it in this format to save time. So that's all for today. You should be able to draw the structural formula for a polymer from a given monomer and vice versa. Thanks for watching.